everyone, Pastor Stan again, going to bring you another teaching from the parables of Jesus. This is the parable of the wicked farmers, and we're going to take a look at what that means and its application for us today. The parable of the wicked farmers. Matthew chapter 21, verse 14, and then we're going to skip down to verse 33. Let's take a look at it. The blind and the lame came to Jesus in the temple, and he healed them. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law saw these wonderful miracles and heard even the children in the temple shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. But the leaders were very angry. Then Jesus said, Now listen to another story. A certain landowner planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to tenant farmers and moved to another country. At the time of the great grape harvest, he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers grabbed his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. So the landowner sent a larger group of his servants to collect for him, but the results were the same. Finally, the owner sent his son, thinking, surely they will respect my son. But when the tenant farmers saw his son coming, they said to one another, Here comes the heir to the estate. Come on, let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves. So they grabbed him, dragged him out of the vineyard, and murdered him. When the owner of the vineyard returns, Jesus asked, What do you think he will do to those farmers? The religious leaders replied, He will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. Then Jesus asked them, Didn't you ever read this in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone? This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce the proper fruit. Anyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone who falls it falls on. Well, when the leading priest and Pharisees heard this parable, they realized he was telling the story against them. They were the wicked farmers. They wanted to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowds who considered Jesus to be a prophet. Well, may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now, Jesus tells a parable to explain the reality of organized religion's complete rejection of God and his plan. It is really, for me at least, reminiscent of the words Jesus spoke in the Sermon on the Mount when he says in Matthew 7, 24 and following these words, Jesus says, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Jesus is the solid rock on which the modern-day disciples build their lives. And we have a responsibility to share the good news about Jesus with all we meet in one way or another. And one of the main reasons we have been given this great privilege of sharing Jesus with the world is because the organized religion of Jesus' day, those first given the same responsibility of sharing Jesus with the world, completely rejected him and the Father in heaven who sent him. Organized religion are the wicked farmers. The servants sent to receive the owner's share of the crop are the prophets of God. The son sent to the wicked farmers is Jesus. Organized religion mistreats the prophets, then kills Jesus, thinking that they are now in control of the money-making enterprise called the people of God. That's right. They intend on building their own kingdom by taxing and oppressing the people of God. Well, the problem for the organized religion wicked farmers is their rejection of God and his plan for the salvation of the world. 
that's their going to be their big undoing here. So you see, it is God who creates and subsequently owns everything. The organized religion, wicked farmers, they own nothing. It's not theirs to begin with. That's right. And they're not going to be able to take advantage of God to use God's people to make themselves rich. Yes, they own nothing. And since the organized religion, wicked farmers have failed in their responsibility to believe in Jesus and then share him with the world, God takes it away from them and gives it to others who will do what God commands. As for the organized religion, wicked farmers, well, they testify against themselves when they say, after Jesus asked them the question, what do you think God will do? What do you think the owner will do to those wicked farmers? And this is what they said, verse 41. The religious leaders replied, he will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. As it was then, so it is today. Organized religion follows the same path as their forebears, the organized religion, wicked farmers in Jesus' parable. And now, just as then, the responsibility for sharing Jesus to the world has been given to the modern-day disciples of Jesus and taken away from the organized religion, wicked farmers of today. My friends, this is the parable of the wicked farmers. Well, what do we learn today, preacher? Well, here's some things that I've learned. Number one, organized religion has failed in its responsibility to share the good news about Jesus. As it was then, so it is now. Number two, the modern day disciples of Jesus have been given this responsibility to share Jesus with the world because organized religion has failed. So it was in Jesus' day, so it is now. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for sending Jesus from heaven to die on the cross for our sins. Help all the modern day disciples of Jesus to be faithful to his command to share the good news about him to all the world. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God be with you. And my friends, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Get the word out. If you know somebody who's struggling, with organized religion, they don't understand what's going on, send them a link to this video. Let's get the word out there and let's see if we can help some people. Let's work together in the kingdom of God to share Jesus with all we meet. All right, we'll see you next time on the Pastor Stan YouTube channel. Love y'all. Bye-bye.